You're inside the Mouse Castle with Tim and Anthony. Visit us at themousecastle.com. Follow the Mouse Castle on Facebook and Inside the MC on Twitter. Inside the Mouse Castle is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. Soon, you'll understand why. Here's Tim and Anthony. Welcome inside the Mouse Castle. I'm Tim Galloway. And I'm Anthony Reynolds. It is March 2nd, 2016. Yes. I always get spooky with it. How you get so sinister with it? It's like you're scared. I don't know. People. It's either that or Don Pardo. Take your Well, pick. we'll do a Don Pardo. How's that sound? Okay, I can do Don Pardo. It's March 2nd. 2016. That sounds like spooky Don Pardo. So I, I don't Jimmy know. Really anyway, we Jane are your Curtis. weekly dose of Disney news, information, and commentary. And what's coming up today, Don? Disney parks are introducing seasonal pricing. We pay tribute to Disneyland's first president, Jack Lindquist. And there's going to be an It's a Small World movie after all. No. That's all next inside the Mouse Castle. So did you catch any of the Oscars over the weekend? I saw a thing about Girl Scout cookies at one point. Um, that was a cute bit. Leonardo DiCaprio something. The Revenant no. something. The, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Mad Max won a lot. It won a ton of technical awards. And it was kind of the reason that Star Wars The Force Awakens got nothing. <laughs> Wow. Because all the awards uh, it was nominated for, mostly, you know, technical awards, were won by Mad Max. Which, I mean, I was happy for it. The good news for Disney and Pixar is Inside Out did win for Best Animated Feature, which surprised no one. Not a surprise. Was, um, I was actually expecting Minions, honestly. Yeah, well, you know, had they been nominated, I'm sure, you know, it would have... <laughs> Were they not it would have made nominated? all the difference in the world. No, they, they, it was not nominated, thankfully. God, that's great. I know, isn't it great? There were actually uh, a, a few uh, foreign films that were nominated. Sean the Sheep movie from England. You had Boy in the World from Brazil. And you had When Marnie Was There from Japan, from, uh, from Studio Ghibli. The only other U.S. movie that was nominated was Anomalisa. The one by Charlie Kaufman, the stop motion animation one. See, I mean, I would hate to be a like a, an animator and be like really good at your job and be like the best at what you do, but still be up against Pixar. Yeah, Inside Out was kind of the nine hundred pound gorilla in uh, in the of the nominees this year. They they really did not stand a chance. And I was actually in Hollywood last week and went to a couple of the presentations that the Motion Picture Academy puts on for our Oscar week. And one of them that I went to was a panel uh, of the best animated features. And they had the producers and directors from all the nominees uh, up on the stage talking about their film. So Pete Docter was there for Inside Out and the people with all the other movies were there. And the English duo with Shaun the Sheep a movie uh they you know just came right out you know and said more than one time alluded to the fact that uh inside that was going to annihilate them <laughs> over the weekend it just it just it was a foregone conclusion at one point uh pete doctor was told he should have made inside out a short film to give the rest of the nominees a shot at actually winning <laughs> So yeah, it was a foregone, foregone conclusion. But the thing that was—I mean, the thing that was neat—you uh, know—it was an opportunity. I had not seen the lesser-known foreign releases, but I'll tell you right now, *Boy in the World* is definitely a, a movie I would—I would like to to see. It's hand-drawn animation. It turns out that almost all of the animation and the script and the direction was done by one person. Oh wow! It was kind of jaw dropping, and um, everybody in in the audience, I could tell in the panel, was was very impressed with the ability of this person. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it was Inside Out's party, and uh, you know, everyone else was just there. Pete Doctor actually gave a really uh, moving acceptance speech along with Jonas R Rivera, talking about you know people to to, to follow their dreams, and follow their 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 passions, and make stuff and things like that. It was it was a, a very good moment during the Academy Awards. Of course, all the, the big to do with the Oscars was about Oscars So White and Chris Rock. Had a few things, had a few choice words to say about that. I heard a good review. Was on Actually, I thought, hosting, his, I thought his opening monologue was, was spot on. But, but I'll tell you the truth. 
you keep hammering on the same issue over and over again and realizing that it's the academy allowing the host to continually bash them throughout the program um that started actually mm -hmm. to to kind of to wear thin after a while if if yeah, if he had that. just stuck with his uh, opening monologue i think it would have been fine but i think it it just kind of, kind of got to be just tiresome before the show was out um although the side bit with uh, the girl scout cookies is actually kind of funny I was walking through the break room when that was going on, and then I saw Leonardo DiCaprio on the internet was really happy having his cookies. I saw a photo, and then I saw Morgan Freeman walks up to the stage, grabs a cookie. Was and that then great? Oh my god, I saw that. I think it was on BuzzFeed. They actually broke it down and and showed you know just just what how, what a smooth badass Morgan Freeman is. How he he uh chris rock has a box of cookies up there and he's and morgan freeman i guess is the only taker uh, who was it who was standing right there that wasn't sure whether they were going to take the cookies or not there was another actor on, on stage that was just kind of leery about 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 doing it didn't want to do it on stage i guess and yeah and uh morgan freeman uh, grabs not one cookie but two cookies pops them in his mouth and he walks off stage <laughs> Like he doesn't even go back to the audience. Yeah, he exactly. And this is you know this is as they're presenting the best you know, picture you know Oscar to uh, to spotlight, and it's you know it's closing out the the awards, and uh, Chris Rock you know comes out on stage just to you know do a quick close, and he's got his box of cookies, and and uh, Morgan Freeman was just so smooth, <laughs> he really was. I love that. Disney's kind of sort of raised ticket prices, but they're doing something a little different. Yeah, they're doing. Uh, surge I know. Pricing. I've heard so many. I've heard so Basically. many, like you know, cute little euphemisms for this type of pricing. You know, seasonal pricing, surge pricing, highway robbery. No, so yeah, they I mean they're big. So if you go on a busy day, it's going to cost more, and not so busy day is cost less, right. but still more. Although, at, at Disneyland, the uh, the value season price is actually a few dollars lower than what was the previous you know everyday single day uh price so that did go down but oh, obviously okay. the you know the the uh the peak season went up and then what is what, what do they call mm -hmm. it it's it's peak season value regular peak yeah that's it and really they only made this adjustment to one-day tickets, and they did it at Disneyland and all the Walt Disney World parks. And I'm just curious how mm -hmm. this is really going to affect attendance or how many tickets people are actually purchasing. Because if you're getting multi-day passes or you have an annual passport, the multi-day passes went up. Uh, annual passes did not have an increase yet, but the only real major change was for the single-day tickets. How many single day tickets i mean how how big of a percentage of that is to disney's actual visitor volume that's what i'm curious because I, I most people that i know if they aren't annual pass holders are at least getting multi-day ticket so i don't know a lot of people that mm -hmm. go for one day i know and who um, does that apparently some people do well i go for one day a lot but i got my pass yeah i mean i i mean because i'm an annual you know because i'm an annual pass holder i do like the quick hit well i'll go in for a few hours you know have lunch maybe you know you know, get a drink at the Cove Bar or something like that, and, you know, then, you know, go ride Pirates or something like that. And I'm done. It, it's rare that I do like a rope drop and then just go from open to close. I really, I really don't visit the park the same way as I used to. See, and I'm still, if I have the opportunity, I'm there for as early as I can be to as late as I can be. But that's, that has not changed for me. All right. Well, maybe I need to go visit with you then. But uh, anyway, where, where the prices are at now uh, at uh, Disneyland and California Adventure, peak days uh, is $119, $105 for regular days, $95 for value days. And to compare it, the, the previous uh, one day, one park price was uh, $99. So that's where that went. And then in Walt Disney World, at the Magic Kingdom, it's going to be $124 for peak days, $110 for you know, regular days, and then $102 or $105 for the uh, value price days. Then for the other parks that include Epcot, Animal Kingdom, and Hollywood Studios, the prices are a little bit lower. Now, my thing is with Disney, I mean, they're known for raising their prices. Always. A lot. Uh, yeah. But like at a certain point, I mean, they got to stop raising it. 
it, it, it can't just keep going at this rate. In theory, yeah. But you know, I mean, it's not like they're ever gonna gonna drop prices. That's just that's just not going to happen. But I mean, the, the criticism that that Disney is getting is that they're going out of their way to make the Disney parks uh, more for the rich and elite, and you know, the average person who once used to be able to afford to go to Disneyland and take their families. Uh, it's getting close to the point that they no longer do that. And I mean, you know, you and I, you know, both have a number of friends who have, you know, said quite clear that they're not going to be renewing their annual passes because, you know, ticket prices just continue to, to escalate and it's just getting to be a bit too much. Hard to defend it anymore. Like it used to be, okay, they're quality, they're good, but now it costs 120 bucks. Yep. Ridiculous. And I know you, you, you've got to wonder, I mean, the, the uh, Disney will continue to charge what the market will bear if as long as people, whether they are day visitors, whether they're annual pass holders, whatever, as long as people continue to go and spend money in the park, Disney is going to continue to waste, raise prices because they can. And let's, you know, let's be realistic. It does take money to operate the parks. Of course, you know, Bob Iger makes a significant amount of money. Mm hmm which mm -hmm. uh, I know concerns a lot of rank and file employees about how much money he makes, but that, that's a whole other separate discussion for another time. But, you know, as, as long as, you know, they're building, you know, Star Wars land or whatever they're going to call it. I mean that, you know, the, you know, the, the, the money just has to come from somewhere. They're not just going to pay for it in cash. So the, you know, the, the argument is, well, of course they have to raise prices because that's how they pay to build and maintain this cool stuff in the parks. But they got so much money. Why do they need more? Right there is the crux of the matter. Disneyland's being like Bernie Sanders. It's not taking money from the rich people. It's taking it from the everyman. <laughs> got a Trump reference. Got a Sanders reference. Very good. We're good. Feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Moving on. <laughs> Uh, sad news from over the weekend, Disneyland's very first president, Jack Lindquist, passed away at the age of uh, 88. And I got the chance to meet Jack Lindquist a few years ago. He was actually at a, uh, a MyShed event. And he, and he did a number of MyShed events over the years. He was really, he was really good at supporting the, the fan community and, and uh, you know, getting out there and, and meeting people. Very nice gentleman. But he started his career as like an ad man. Uh, at uh, at Disneyland and kind of worked his way uh, up from there. And he was known as kind of a marketing genius and uh, a lot of Disneyland's most successful promotions in the first few decades of the park's operation were his ideas. And just, uh, just a very nice, very talented uh, man. And he had written a book uh, called In Service to the Mouse, which I highly recommend you get your hands on if you've never read it. Uh, which just has some wonderful anecdotes about uh, his many years uh, at at Disneyland, and uh, also he, uh, I mean, aside from that, he was also involved uh, in in some of the planning for Walt well, Disney World, Tokyo Disneyland, and Disneyland Paris as well. So, uh, our condolences wow. to his uh, families and friends. Uh, Disney legend. He's got a window on Main Street and a really really good good guy. So uh, rest in peace, Jack Lindquist. Over at California Adventure. Carsland is getting a the shot in the arm it needs. Yeah, because it doesn't have enough stuff over there to keep people interested. But no, it's got one. It's got two rides, and God, that that ride just failed. The the uh, Luigi's flying, flying tires. tires. Oof. I you know it I, it was full of good intentions, and I I enjoyed it initially for the novelty of of the whole you know kind of recreating the flying saucers thing. That was that was a very nostalgic yeah. thing for me. But yeah, in the end, it was not a great ride. But this Rollick and Roadsters thing with the it trackless looks, uh, ride system, it looks pretty cool. I'm actually kind of stoked for this. Looks fun. Yeah. Um, but they're having a. Annual pass holder um, previews. Yeah, it's going to officially open on March 7th. March 7th is the open. Oh, God, that's soon. Mm -hmm. That's like that's next all, week. That's in a week. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, but if you're an uh, annual pass holder, you can sign up for a, uh, a preview of it on March 4th. 
Mm-hmm. So that's coming up too. Um, I, yeah, it's an all day thing. Mode? And I, I, I'm guessing, I mean, in the past, you know, they've done these uh, annual pass holder events where you have to like, you know, register in advance or something like that. But this just looks like all day on March 4th, if you show up and you're an annual pass holder, oh. you can get in line and, and write it. Now, you don't even need to sign up. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, no advance registration is required. Please note, this preview may involve long wait periods. You think? Yep. <laughs> but, it looked, but it looks really cool. I mean, it's a... Um, we're going back to uh, Cars 2, actually. And uh, Luigi has invited his cousins from Carsoli. See what they did there? Oh, yeah. For a little get-together. And I guess they, they do things with this with this trackless ride system where uh, the cars kind of, I mean, they, they spin around a bit, but it's almost like they, they dance. <laughs> hmm. And there are multiple programmable ride options. So there's a very good chance that you could ride it multiple times and not, it not be the same ride each time. Oh yeah. That's kind of what Disney started to do more and more. We don't want them to ride the same thing more than once. I'm kind of watching this video here. It's kind of cool. Does it look neat? Yeah. So opening March 7th at Disney California Adventure. Jump in line on March 4th if you're an annual pass holder. Get it. And while you're waiting in line, you can bitch about how high the ticket prices are. Mm-hmm. And how they don't affect you because you're a pass holder. And yeah. You're good for a few months at least. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, also coming to Disney California Adventure, we talked about this on our last show, the Food and Wine Festival is coming up weekends during the month of April and they have announced these special presentations that they're going to uh, be doing during the event. They're going to have uh, culinary demonstrations that are going to take place uh, on the backlot stage in Hollywood land. These are like complimentary uh, presentations, I guess about food preparation and, and stuff like that. Um, then if you want to pay a little extra, there is for $15, you can attend one of the beverage seminars, beverage seminars. That's always a good thing Yay. Uh, to increase your knowledge about wine, beer and spirits. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> uh, 45 minute seminars and it includes three tastings for 15 bucks. That's not a bad deal. 15 bucks. Yeah. 15 bucks. One five. One five. Uh huh. Forty five minute seminar and you get three tastings. I don't that's think that's a bad, bad deal. I think that's a pretty good deal. Well, pretty, pretty yeah. Bad. And then and then on stage seventeen at Hollywood Land, and we figured out where stage seventeen was, right? Yeah, it's the yeah, uh, where Olaf was and who wants to be uh let's make a deal. Yeah, that's it. Something like that. Uh, millionaire. There they're going to have the celebrity kitchen. And they're gonna Ooh. have uh celebrity guests including superstar chefs. And I'm quoting this directly from the Disney Parks blog. They're going to have celebra- uh, superstar chefs, Guy Fieri, Graham Elliott, Keegan Gerhard, Robert Irvine, and Disneyland Resorts executive chef Andrew Sutton. And they're going Guy to... Guy Fieri's going to be there? Guy Fieri's going to be there. Oh, Guy Fieri scares me a little bit. Can I say that? <laughs> he's a troll doll come to life. He's very, There's something just about that man that just bothers me. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you want to get uh, if you want to get this behind the scenes uh, look into the life of a superstar chef, uh, that will cost you ninety nine bucks plus tax and gratuity. Sounds like they're going to feed you too. Sounds gratuitous. <laughs> ah, that sounds good. I I don't know that that might be a little a little pricey. I I did uh, notice at least one of our friends uh, got a little opinionated about uh, that, that cost. Because I guess a few years ago when they did the Food and Wine Festival at California Adventure, they, they weren't charging for a lot of these, and now they are. Oh, well, of course they are now. Yeah. And then, of course, if you're an annual pass holder, you can actually get a VIP experience. For an additional 50 Ooh. bucks. Uh, you would get premium seating, priority access for the autograph session, plus a special gift. Ooh. Ooh. Special gift. If you see Guy, you get a heart attack. Yes, that's it. Yeah. I got some of that stuff he makes. I know if you go to like, what is it? Dives and diners and drive throughs and whatever that show diners. that he does. Yeah. Some, and dives. Yeah. Some of those, some of those, uh, of those, some of that, some of that stuff. I mean, uh, you could either eat it or just take a knife and stab yourself in the heart. One or the other. <laughs> I know, but you know, it, it all looks good, man. I love crap. I would try it. Yeah, I would definitely try it. I, it's not something I could eat every day. That would just that would just be too, a bit too much. 
You would. I've been to a couple of the diner drive-in places. Mm-hmm. And they've all been pretty good. Pretty good. So if you want to find out uh, more about all these various events of the Food and Wine Festival, you can actually purchase your tickets uh, at Disneyland.com, and we'll put a link up on the blog so you can find it. Hopefully it's not sold out by the time we post it. Guy Fieri is going to be there, and he's scary. And he is scary Fieri. That's what they call him. For an extra $70, he will stay away from you. (laughs) (laughs) He'll give you a ride home. He will will ride Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters with you. Oh, God. You know, it's something that I have not talked about on the show in a number of weeks. Disney Infinity. Oh, my God. And uh, there is is news to talk about. Uh, uh, Yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, they did a video presentation called uh, Disney Infinity Next, announcing the cool stuff that is coming up uh, for players of Disney Infinity in the coming year. And I guess oh. it's kind of a it's kind of a new video segment that they're going to be doing on a regular basis now. Like every few months, they're going to do this this video where they just talk about everything new that's coming up. Anyway, in the premiere edition of Disney Infinity Next, first and foremost, there will not be a Disney Infinity 4.0 released this year. What? So far as oh, we know, you poor thing. That's what the assumption is. Well, the the trade off is. They're going to continue to be adding stuff to Disney Infinity 3.0. Oh. And uh, in fact, uh, out out this week, as far as new characters, I, I just I just got them and I'm, I'm like so happy. Uh, you can now play Nick Wilde and Judy Hopps from Zootopia opening this weekend, by the way. Oh, that's so yeah. neat. Yeah. You know that uh, it's get it's got uh, Zootopia has like 100 percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes right now. That may have dropped People. a little bit, but for the most part, it's getting really, really good reviews. And I had a lot of concerns about this movie. And people kind of want to see it. And people, I kind of want to do now, I because because the buzz is really good, and and now I can play the characters on Disney Infinity. But uh, oh yeah, you can! Yay! But later this <laughs> month, March fifteenth, they're going to be releasing uh, a number of more characters. They're also going to be releasing Marvel Battlegrounds which gives you the opportunity to take all your Marvel Disney Infinity characters from 2.0 and 3.0 and let them battle it out. Oh, I thought Marvel came out with their own coffee. Marvel coffee would be good. Marvel Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) But this is kind of cool because it gives you an opportunity for up to four players to play at once which is a new concept because usually it's like two player mode all the time, but it's like an arena format so they can all uh, uh, battle each other. And uh, they did make it known that there will also be specific playset releases for all of the various Disney components. So there'll be like a Disney playset. There'll be some sort of Pixar playset, some sort of, Star Wars playset and some sort of Marvel playset. Now, assuming that Marvel Battlegrounds is the Marvel playset, uh, speculation has already started what the Star Wars one is going to be. And could we possibly get to coincide with the movie a Rogue One playset before the end of the year? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to get. And let's see, Finding Dory is coming out this summer. Could there be a Finding Dory playset? Oh man, I'm I, oh, I know I'm you're all a tell. quiver. I can just tell. Oh, oh. Yeah, and uh, just based on a tease that they gave in the uh, Disney Infinity Next video presentation, there may possibly be um, something to do with Alice in Wonderland. Oh, yeah, maybe That's we'll cool. get a Johnny Depp Mad Hatter character. Do you know they're coming out off topic with a High School Musical four? Really? Yeah, uh, Hollywood Reporter. Is saying that they just started uh, casting. Wow, put that yeah. on Disney Infinity. Get you know, get that Zac Efron character going. There you go. <laughs> Sounds like they're rebooting it though. Oh, interesting. Okay. Breaking news. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Me too. Now you know how I feel about Disney Infinity. Yeah. So, more <laughs> news to come from Disney Infinity, but that's all they got right now. So I'm done. <laughs> It was a good segment, Tim. I know. I know you were so, actually. I I actually got you like involved and engaged and 
offering feedback, sarcastic as it was, but you you were actually <laughs> involved in a in a conversation with mm -hmm. Disney Infinity. I'm stunned. Yeah, I was, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you that's my New Year's resolution? I don't know. Does it involve mocking me? No, it's. I want to call more people little buddy. Little buddy. Hey, little Kill little again. Buddy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, move on. Speaking of three-hour cruises. Um, <laughs> well done. They're making a, a, a movie, a ride. They're making a ride out of It's a Small World. They're making a movie out of It's a Small World. Why? Why? What are they going to do? I For two hours, the song plays in your head. I don't know. Oh, my God. This is great. Okay. who? Okay. So who do we got? Okay. I, apparently, this like this thing's been in development for like two years, and now it's two there. It years. appears they are genuinely moving forward with it. A treatment written. Producers are the same people who did the Lego movie. I don't know. I think, what is this going to be about? Now, is it going to be animated or live action or... And John Turtletaub is directing. He directed the National Treasure movies. Okay. Uh, and okay, so Disney hired Tim Rasmussen and Vince DiMeglio. Now, this concerns me at the bottom of the Variety article. They both have credits on License to Wed, Marmaduke, Meet the Fockers, and The Girlfriend Equation. Alrighty then. It's in good hands, little oh, buddy. And John Turtletop also <laughs> directed The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Okay, Nicolas Cage has to be in this movie. He actually really does. Because otherwise I'm not going to see it. I will see it if Nicolas Cage is in it and it's a total train wreck. It's it's Here's the thing. This movie isn't going to be good. It's going to be mediocre, bad, or so bad it's good. I'm I'm really keeping my fingers crossed for so bad it's good. <laughs> yeah, because you look at who they got involved in this, it has all the makings of a hot mess. Yes. God, Marmaduke. And that will do it for this edition of Inside the Mouse Castle. Don't forget to visit us at themousecastle.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash themousecastle, and on Twitter at Inside the MC. And we are also on Instagram, Tumblr, and Pinterest, and you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Coming up this weekend in the uh, Mouse Castle Lounge, my guest will be Scott Zone. And Scott has a, a long career in the film industry. Uh, he's He was a special effects cameraman. He was a colorist. But he's done a lot of work in film preservation. And he is the guy that did, like, the, the digital restoration and preservation of all of the home movies of Walt Disney and his family. Mm. And he did a, he's done a number of special projects for the Walt Disney Family Museum. And on top of that, and this is the really cool thing, talking about what uh, this guy was involved in in Hollywood, he was also on the effects team that created the lightsabers in The Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, that's cool. I know. And he's uh, he's got some great... Uh, I, even on top of that, and I, I won't give it all away, you can give a listen this weekend, but he's got some uh, great stories from old Hollywood. And uh, old just, town. yeah, I mean, just, it was just, it was just one of those one of those interviews. You know, I, I, I approached him because I've heard about I had heard about the work that he had done with the Walt Disney Family Museum. And then I started talking to him and I started getting story after story and to hear about his family, about his involvement in the film industry and all that. It was just it was just one great story after another. So it's really going to be a fun show. And that's coming up this weekend on the Mouse Castle Lounge. So be there. Yeah. So be there. And, you know, and by the same token, you know, be there when inside the Mouse Castle. We'll be back next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Unless <laughs> my schedule throws another curve. Yeah. Well, well last week my <laughs> schedule threw a curve. So th th this week is your turn. <laughs> but uh, yeah. we will we, we'll hopefully catch you all next time on uh, Inside the Mouse Castle. See ya. See ya.